In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about modeling. Now, what do I mean by modeling? I mean by representing some sort of real life situation. You have a bunch of data and you're going to try to use some mathematical model to do something with it. Sometimes it's just to actually look at the results. You might want to interpret them. You want to make conclusions. You want to make predictions so you can think what's going to happen later. Now, this skill is this video especially it's a bit more of a generic one because I want to show you some skills that are going to help you for your well not only for your class but also for your IAs your internal assessments so this uh, if you do a modeling type one uh, this could be really useful for you so I'm going to give you some generic hints and tips here and see how this works so there's lots of different examples when you might do this so for example in economics you might be looking at you know profit versus items sold maybe you want to I don't know like optimize this is a word we call it. like you want to optimize the results. Optimize means like, you know, you get, uh, yeah, you maybe want to optimize profit, for example. You want to figure out what conditions give you the maximum profit. Well, in physics, this is just one example, but projectile motion. So some sort of graph, maybe the graph like this and something fires off at an angle like this. And maybe you want to know like the maximum height or, uh, you know, where it will land or something like that. I mean, there's lots of different ways we can do that. Uh, biology, we can look at, you know, the spread of a virus, which is, you know, very relevant. Uh, so maybe things go, I don't know, maybe they go up like this, and hopefully then they maybe go down later, something like that. Uh, business with supply and demand. I mean, this is a really important one as well, right? You want to make sure you look at, yeah, how much do people need your products versus how much do you have? We also have power generation, for example, uh, wind turbines. That's just one of them. But we have some equation that uh, you know models this behavior. So this is one, how's it called? Power is, uh, I think it's a half times A times rho times V cubed, for example. So something like the power generated based on some conditions about the air, like the speed of the air, for example, and the density and the cross-sectional area of the air. Well, we might have global warming and tides and some sort of sinusoidal fit. So what do I mean by that? These are things that go up and down regularly or periodically, right? That's what we call a sinusoidal. So it could be like, I don't know, maybe it's tides and maybe the height of the tides go like this. You see, different models might have different shapes, but the ideas are going to be similar. And that's sort of the point of this video here is to set up, because later I'm going to have other videos showing you details about these different you know, shapes. But for right now, it's a good idea to just think about how do you actually follow some steps when you're doing a model? I mean, first of all, you want to look at a real life situation. So you want something that actually you know, makes some sense, some sort of reality to it. Then you sort of, well, you develop a model. You try to figure out what kind of model fits this. Maybe you get a graph for it. Maybe you figure out some parameters. Then you want to test it out. Maybe that could be kind of number two here. After that, you know, you might want to modify your model. So first you've got to test and see, is this reasonable? Does it fit? And if it does or doesn't, well, then you make some changes. And then what you do is you sort of you go back and you sort of you iterate this loop. So that way, you know, then maybe go and develop it again and test it and modify it and so on. For your IA, for example, this is a really good way to do something like this, just to sort of go through some version of this. Now, keep in mind, different situations will call for different models, right? Just as you've seen, for example, maybe there's different shapes entirely. So that's sort of the point here. So let's take a look at this number one here. You know when I said develop a model? Well, here we go. By the way, you ever feel like this? Exams and papers? <laughs> so we've got different kinds of variables. Um, there's a lot of different ways of calling them, but I think one good way, we can call x the independent okay, variable. And we could call y then the dependent variable. This would be the key words here to use, dependent variable. Now what's the difference between them? I mean the x is the one that you, the independent one is the one you sort of, you manipulate this, you change it. So maybe I'll write that down, you manipulate or change this variable. Whoops, I didn't spell change right, did I? No, change. There you go. This one right here, uh, this one changes as a result. So I mean, uh, not sure what the best, yeah, maybe I'll just say changes. Changes as a result. So one of them, the dependent one, is the one you actually. I imagine like it's like a like a knob you turn or something or some sort of you know some sort of button you're pushing or some sort of something sort of thing you're changing. And so 
An example could be something like c of x equals 2x plus 3. This could be some sort of model. Well, we have to define things, so maybe we'll define the c of x, for example. That would be your dependent variable. Let me explain in a second here why that is. And then your x might be your de uh, independent variable. And the reason we'd like to do it this way is because this hopefully will make sense to you when you think about the graph of this thing. So maybe this is like the cost of making something depending on how much you sell, something like that. So we have an equation. It goes 2 times x plus 3, just as an example. This, by the way, is a linear model, if you recognize it. Um, and if we look at this, uh, this right here, if I did a, a graph maybe, maybe I'll do like a, some sort of sketch of the graph of this. Well, if this is c of x and this right here is x, see x is the thing that you're changing and c is defined in terms of x. So that's why we like to say it's your dependent variable. As you change x, y then changes accordingly. But it's x that you're manipulating or changing. In this case right here, let's see. Um, well, it's going to be a straight line with a slope of 2, a gradient of 2, sorry, and a y-intercept of 3. So I don't know, maybe something like, something like this. Keep in mind, I mean, this is, I didn't put in numbers, so it's hard to tell, but just to give you an idea what this could look like, something like that. Now, it's important to think about the domain and range as well. So what's reasonable to this? Does it make sense? You know, where isn't it defined? So, for example, let's say I did, um, you know, an example with like a projectile, for example. Maybe a projectile like this. So the projectile, maybe it goes like this, pew, like this. So these are here will be values of uh, x and y. This is maybe like x in meters, and y is also, let's say, in meters. This will be measured in meters. Maybe I should be careful with the notation that I use here. You might think it's a function. I'll just say x and y. But it will be measured in meters. This could be a projectile. I throw something off a cliff or something like that. Well, let's think about this. Does it make sense? Because, I mean, um, this is a mathematical equation, so it probably continues on, you know, forever like this, right? And we have, technically, we could think about the x and y axes extending, you know, up and down as well. But where does it make sense? Do You see, I, I didn't draw the x's as negatives because it makes no sense. If you fly off a cliff forward, it doesn't make any sense. You go backwards. So does it make sense then I might want to restrict my domain and maybe say that, you know, x has to be anything, uh, well, in this case right here, let's just say this is like 4. Let's just pretend this is 4 and this is, you know, 0. This is maybe 2 here. Well, then I could say that you know x has to be something between 4 and uh, 0, so something like this. I might want to restrict my range. Uh, sorry, my domain. My range, maybe I say that uh, you know y has to be greater than or equal to 0 because you can't have a negative height. You, you don't consider when it's down there. So you could do some things like this. So this is what I mean by domain and range, and where doesn't it fit? Because just as important as where a model fits is where it doesn't fit. It's really important to define these things. All right, we've got parameters as well. So parameters, um, when you're actually fixing some sort of model, in this case here, there's a linear model here. This right here, for example, would be a gradient. You know, if you recognize this as a straight line here, this is your gradient. This could be your y-intercept. Well, it's important then, you know, when you're doing this, Often our goal is to actually try to find these parameters. So once you decide on a model, if it should be linear, it basically helps to look at the data. You can decide what kind of model to use. And your goal then, you know, will be to try to find these. So, you know, our goal then will be, you know, try to find or, you know, determine the parameters. I think that's maybe a good way to say it. These are your different, you know, coefficients. These are the things that will define your model in this case. So it's m times x plus c. Well, you can do it by hand. So you can use equations or logic to figure this out. Ideally, you want to get things in one variable. That's going to be the key here. So if you're looking at, I don't know, like a box or something like that, and it's the volume, you want it with just one variable in there, like volume as opposed to, I don't know, x, let's just say. So you want one variable, not two or three. Then it gets too complicated. For example, this is just one here. But if we look at this one right here, uh, I mean, this particular graph, we could maybe... Yeah, let's just say I sketch it. So I'll say, all right, well, this is right here. Let's just define it here. This is called P of X, whatever that is. Maybe it's profits or something. And this here could be X. Well, this graph right here, if you remember about, uh, if you know about transformations, um, let's see, this is going to be a quadratic that opens downwards. It's been shifted to the right by one and up by five. And it opens downwards. So something like, I don't know, 
This here is 5, and this here is uh, 1. It'll be something that has a gradient, oh sorry, a vertex like this. And maybe it goes, I don't know, maybe it goes like down like this. Something like that. So maybe you want to do a sketch of this, then you have to think about the domain and range. I'm just trying to say by hand, you can just figure it out if you already have an equation for it. However, that's not all that, that common. Well, never mind. It is common enough. If you can define things really well, it's nice. But sometimes you need to find them using your calculator or some sort of regression. Like I said, this is really important for your IAs. And I'm going to have videos showing you the different forms. I'm just trying to generalize it for right now. So step one, I think a good idea is to just, first of all, put in your data. Put in, actually, you know what you have. Your calculator. Let's so use your calculator here for this. Calculator. You put in your data. Uh, then you want to look at the graph of it. And then you want to do a regression. This is when your calculator gives you an equation for it. So that's the, the main idea for this. Now, I'm using a TI Inspire for these ones right here, for these little steps right here. But uh, there are also existing steps for the different other calculators, like the um, TI-84, the Casio one, or whatever. So just see, so you know, these are here ones, for example, for the TI Inspire. Maybe I'll just write that down here so we have it. All right, so TI Inspire. Let me just show you an example of what I mean by this. So let's say we're doing the world's most boring thing. It's called Newton's Law of Cooling. And we have time. Let's say you measured this and you did uh, temperature like this. If you want to have an idea how to do it, well, first it helps to put in the data. So let me, let me show you this. So I first of all, I need to somehow put this into the calculator. In this case, I'm going to open up a new page, which I just did. I want list and spreadsheet. There we go. And don't forget to name my column. So I'll call this one right here. Uh, what should I call it? I'll call it, uh, yeah, I'll call it X and Y, I guess. So X and Y. You do have to name them or else it's really hard to use them later. So let's just go ahead and put in these values here. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, but then 6, 8, 10. Okay, so 1, uh, and it's 72 here. And then I've got, uh, let's see, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, and Ten. It's a little bit boring to watch me do, right? But hopefully you get the idea. And I go up and I put in the data here. I just want to show you how to actually do this. I just, you know, use some data actually that one of my students did last year. So this right here is just some data that she got. It was actually a good set of data. It worked just fine. So just to show you, here you go. There's a good set of data. Now I've I've put in the stuff into my calculator. But it doesn't tell me much yet. I don't know what kind of model to use. So it helps to look at a plot. There's a bunch of ways of doing it. You could graph it by hand or just estimate or think about it. But I mean, you could actually plot it properly. So let me do a new page. So I'll add new page. And this time I do data and statistics. See? And now it looks all random like this. I have to make sure to tell it what my x is. So I'll make my x, x. And please make my y. I click there and I say y. Notice now what it looks like. Oh. That's kind of, I can even change my uh, axes like this. But let's just say I'd go like this. Now I have an idea what kind of fit I should do. Because you got to think, does a straight line work here? Like, mm, probably not, but I could. So now you do different kinds of regression. So here's where you can have fun with it. You can say menu, and you can say, uh, okay, I want to analyze and give me a regression. Um, give me a linear regression, let's just say. Boom, it gives you the equation and it's, it's pretty lousy. So you see, so you're like, well, that kind of, that's not very good. So maybe I do uh, undo. So I go back up to here, control A, do uh, undo, I think it is. Hold on a second, there we go. All right, uh, what else could I do? I could do different kinds of regression. So maybe this looks like some sort of um, exponential graph. So maybe I'll do show an exponential. Show me that one. Hey, that one fits a lot better. Do you see that? Now, if you ever want to know about uh, how things fit, it's something a little bit more complicated, but watch, if you click on the graph here, at least on this one here, um, I think it is, if I right click on it, does that work? No, I'll just do it like this. I'll just say um, show, I want to actually show um, residuals, it's called. That's actually a good one. You could actually show the residuals for these things, they're called. Uh, there you go. What this tells you is how off each value is from your graph. So you can sort of try to minimize the residuals. It basically tells you on each point how off were you. In this case, you're off by four. You're off by four. Oh, here you're on exactly on it. See, the height. It's like the difference here. Maybe it's a little bit complicated to think about. So don't worry too much about that. I'll just undo it. But basically, you can see which one fits.
There's other ways of doing it, of course. You could have been over here, and you could have gone directly to do your regression analysis. Some people like to do it directly here. But see, I think it helps to see it so you know what kind of regression to do. Because you could just do calculations, and you can say, give me a, uh, I don't know, let's say a linear regression. Let's just pretend I did that, right? And I could tell, okay, use my x's, use my y's, and say go. So this also did the same idea. It gave me my equation, and it also gave me my r value. It also so it tells me something about the quality of the fit. Basically, you'll do a whole bunch of work on something like this here to try to decide what kind of fit works best. In this case here, the data seem to go like this, right? It seemed to kind of go like this, as this is your time in minutes. And this right here was your temperature in Celsius. But basically, you could use regression. You can use your calculator to help you to get a good equation for this. But once you've got an equation, you should do something with it. All right, so remember what we've done. We talked about you know developing a model. You've got to test it out now. And you might even want to modify your model. All right, so just to try to show you the last steps in this. Whoops. So if we did something like this, uh, it doesn't really matter, I guess. But uh, if I wanted to uh, modify this, well, of course, then I might go back to develop the model. Well, you should always comment on the appropriateness or the reasonableness. Like, how does this even make sense? You want to justify your model, so you want to, you know, talk about why it is that you chose this. You want to use uh, your model to make predictions. We have something called extrapolation. Um, let me maybe use an example like this. What if I use an example where I've made my own axes and I've got some data points here. So I've got an X and a Y like this. And I got some data points. Maybe I have them like this, like this, like this, and like this. Let's just pretend. So let's say it looks kind of linear. And let's pretend that I uh, did a linear regression. So I asked my calculator for a straight line fit. And it gave me something like this. Well, you could use this to do some stuff, right? Do you notice there is a range of values or a domain, I guess you could say, but there exists, you know, a set of values within which everything is defined. So we've got something called extrapolation and interpolation, and they're different. Okay, so this is actually pretty important. Um, let's say extrapolation. Let me just write this down. I'll say uh, your estimate. How could I say it? Your estimate is outside your data. That's the key thing here. What do I mean by an extrapolation? Well, in this case. Maybe if I use this right here as my data, and then I use this to predict that, oh, a value should be up here, for example. This right here would be my extrapolation. Because, see, the data that I've actually found, is, it's actually between here and here. Do you understand? Like, this right here is where my data actually exists. So this would be my extrapolation. So this says, well, I've used it to predict. Um, it also helps to think, does this make sense? Because very often on a good IA, you would talk about, well, this predicts this, but that makes no sense because of such and such. So that's an extrapolation. I can also do um, interpolation. That's an estimate within. This is important. Okay, so within your data. So for example, um, maybe I have a point like, maybe I'll do a different color. I'll do it like this. Maybe I have this point right here, I decide. This here could be an interpolation. See, so do you notice this is a value right here that um, is within the data. You know, the, the data is sort of found between here and here. So anything that I estimate between here and here on the x's, that'll be an interpolation. Anything outside of that data range is going to be an extrapolation. Hopefully that makes sense. So in other videos, I'm going to show you more details about how to specifically work with each different, you know, shape. But just to give you an idea, at least, this is how we can work with models.